Welcome to KJV Home Bible Study from the Man Cave. This is JC Ligar with Chloe Ligar, and today we are going to continue with our topic on the doctrine of the Holy Spirit. Today's topic is the Holy Spirit Speaks. But, Chloe Ligar, before we do any teaching, what do I need to do? Pray. So let's go to the Lord in prayer. Lord Jesus, Father, yep, I'm back in black because I'm black by popular demand. Chloe kept asking for me to dye my hair, so yeah, I consented. And <laughs> she's happy now, happy little girl. She's got her gothic looking dad again. <laughs> Father, I'm doing a Bible study, Lord, on the Holy Spirit and how a certain man named Peter. When he listened to the Holy Spirit, it changed the whole world. So, Father, I pray this teaching would be a blessing to everybody, Lord, and that we would listen for that still, small voice. And when the Lord speaks, we would obey and see what God can do through us. Father, bless this time in Jesus' name. And everybody said... Amen. Amen. All right. So, we're looking at Acts 10, verse 19. On the morrow, as they went on their journey, and drew nigh unto the city, Peter went up upon the housetop to pray about the sixth hour. And he became very hungry, and would have eaten. But while they made ready, he fell into a trance, and saw heaven open, and a certain vessel descending upon him, as it had been a great sheet knit at the four corners, and led down to the earth, wherein were all manner of four-footed beasts of the earth, and wild beasts, and creeping things, and fowls of the air. And there came a voice to him, Rise, Peter, kill and eat. But Peter said, Lord, I don't want to eat those. They might have the coronavirus. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> but Peter said, Not so, Lord, for I have never eaten anything that is common or unclean. And the voice spake unto him again the second time, What God has cleansed, that call not thou common. And this was done thrice. Again, a little jab here at Peter for denying him three times. Just a friendly reminder to humble him. And the vessel was received up again into heaven. Now Peter doubted in himself what this vision which he had been or which he had seen should mean. Behold, the men which were sent from Cornelius had made inquiry for Simon's house and stood before the gate and called and asked whether Simon, which was surnamed Peter, were lodged there. While Peter thought on the vision, the Spirit said unto him, Behold, three men seek thee. So again, it is the Spirit that was speaking to Peter. So I want to talk about Peter and how God used them in a powerful way. There was a time when him and his disciples were at a place which was the center place of pagan worship. And Jesus was asking his disciples, Who do men say that I am? And they were saying, well, some say you're Elijah, some say you're Jeremiah, others say you're, you know, one of the prophets. And then Jesus asked Peter, but who do you say that I am? So let's find out what <clears throat> Peter had to say and what a blessing he had from Jesus. In Matthew 16, verse 13, When Jesus came into the coast of Caesarea Philippi, he asked his disciples, saying, Whom do men say that I, the Son of Man, am? 
And they said, Some say that thou art John the Baptist. Well, John was beheaded, so that's kind of awkward. Some Elias, and others Jeremiah, or one of the prophets. He said unto them, But whom say ye that I am? And Simon Peter answered and said, Thou art the Christ, the Son of the living God. And Jesus answered and said unto him, Blessed art thou, Simon Barjona, for flesh and blood has not revealed it unto thee, but my Father, which is in heaven. And I say unto thee, Thou art, or that thou art Peter, and upon this rock I will build my church, and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. And here's the main thing I want to get to right here. And I will give unto thee the keys of the kingdom of heaven, and whatsoever thou shalt bind on earth shall be bound in heaven, and whatsoever thou shalt loose on earth shall be loosed in heaven. So again, Peter is getting the keys of the kingdom of heaven. And with it, he's going to be able to unlock it to three people group. Now you got the Jews, who are the descendants of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. And Jacob had the 12 tribes of Israel. So those are the Jewish people, the children of Israel. You have the Gentiles, who are just anybody who's not a Jew. And then you got the Samaritans. Now, the Samaritans are Jews who marry Gentiles. Now, the Jews hated the Samaritans, and the Gentiles also hated the Jews and Samaritans. So these three people group did not get along. Racism is nothing new. There's nothing new under the sun. People hate people for stupid reasons, but and we're going to go to Acts 2, so what happened here is the Holy Spirit on the day of Pentecost came down, and the disciples had a tongue of flame over their heads, and they were able to speak foreign languages that nobody taught them or they've never learned. And the Bible gives a list of all these languages that they were speaking and where they were from. And it's funny because I used to go to a Pentecostal church where we would pretend to speak in tongues. We'd be going, should have bought a Hyundai, but I bought a Mitsubishi. And we're speaking all this baby gibberish that was so ridiculous. Chloe, if you could have seen me back then, imagine a whole church full of people going sha la 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 da 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 and it was so silly. <laughs> but in the book of Acts, when the Holy Spirit was causing them to speak, it was a national language that when they heard it, they go, hey, you're speaking my language, I understand you. So Peter started preaching and we're going to see how he opens the kingdom to the Jews. In Acts 2.14, But Peter, standing up with the eleven, lifted up his voice and said unto them, Ye men of Judea, and all ye that dwell at Jerusalem, be this known unto you, and hearken to my words. For these are not drunken, as you suppose, seeing it is but the third hour of the day. But this is that which was spoken by the prophet Joel. And it shall come to pass in the last days, saith God, I will pour out my Spirit upon all flesh, and your sons and your daughters shall prophesy, and your young men shall see visions, and your old men shall dream dreams. 
and on my servants and on my handmaidens I will pour out in those days of my spirit, and they shall prophesy, and I will shew wonders in heaven above and signs in the earth beneath, blood and fire and vapor of smoke. The sun shall be turned into darkness and the moon into blood, before that great and notable day of the Lord come. And it shall come to pass, whosoever shall call upon or call on the name of the Lord shall be saved. Ye men of Israel, hear these words, Jesus of Nazareth, a man approved of God among you by miracles and wonders and signs which God did by him in the midst of you, as ye yourselves also know, him being delivered by the determinate counsel and foreknowledge of God, ye have taken, and by wicked hands have crucified and slain, whom God has raised up, having loosed the pains of death, because it was not possible that he should be holden of it. So again, Peter is preaching the crucifixion and the resurrection. For David speaketh concerning him, I foresaw the Lord always before my face, for he is always before my face, for he is on my right hand that I should not be moved. Therefore did my heart rejoice and my tongue was glad. Moreover, also my flesh shall rest in hope, because thou shalt not leave my soul in hell, neither wilt thou suffer thine holy one to see corruption. Thou hast made known to me the ways of life, thou shalt make me full of joy with thy countenance. Men and brethren, let me freely speak unto you of the patriarch David, that he is both dead and buried, and his sepulcher is with us unto this day. Therefore, being a prophet, and knowing that God had sworn with an oath to him, that of the fruit of his loins, according to the flesh, he would raise up Christ to sit on his throne. He, seeing this before, spake of the resurrection of Christ, that his soul was not left in hell, neither his flesh did see corruption. This Jesus has God raised up, whereof we all are witnesses. Therefore, being by the right hand of God exalted, and having received of the Father the promise of the Holy Ghost, he has shed forth this which, now, which ye now see and hear. For David is not ascended into heaven, but he saith himself, The Lord said unto my Lord, Sit thou on my right hand, until I make thy foes thy footstool. Therefore let all the house of Israel know assuredly that God has made that same Jesus, whom ye have crucified, both Lord and Christ. Now when they heard this, they were pricked in their heart, and said unto Peter and to the rest of the apostles, Men and brethren, what shall we do? Then Peter said unto them, Repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ, for the remission of sin, and ye shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. For the promise is made unto you, and to your children, and to all that are afar off, even as many as the Lord our God shall call. And with many other words did he testify and exhort, saying, Save yourself from this untoward generation. Then they that gladly received his word were baptized, and the same day there were added unto them about three thousand souls. What's really interesting about that 
is the very, very first Pentecost at Mount Sinai when the children of Israel started doing things with a golden calf and committed an orgy, let's put it in those terms, 3,000 were killed. In the New Testament, after Peter preached, 3,000 were saved. That's a pretty cool thing there. All right, so let's look at Peter going down to the Samaritans now. This is eight years after Peter had preached to the Jews when this happened. Now when the apostles which were at Jerusalem heard that Samaria had received the word of God, they sent unto them Peter and John, who, when they were come down, prayed for them that they might receive the Holy Ghost. For as yet he was fallen upon none of them, only they were baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus. Then laid they their hands upon them, and they received the Holy Ghost. Now again, the reason I think that these believers didn't receive the Holy Ghost yet is that if they didn't get the okay from the apostles, they wouldn't have been accepted in the church. But when Peter went down and laid his hand upon him, him having the keys to the kingdom, they received the Holy Spirit too, and that was the sign that God had accepted them. All right. And when Simon saw that through laying on of the apostles' hands, the Holy Ghost was given, he offered them money. Now, this is not Simon Peter talking about this, Simon the Sorcerer, saying, Give me also this power, that on whomsoever I lay hands, he may receive the Holy Ghost. But Peter said unto him, Thy money perish with thee, because thou hast thought that the gift of God may be purchased with money. Hello, televangelist. All you that think that all these people have descended in their tithes and their offerings and all their money, that God will do all these miracles in their lives, you can't buy the gift of God. And yeah, your money will perish with you for preaching the prosperity gospel. Because it is a false gospel and it will damn your soul. So just a little thing I wanted to throw out there. Alright. Thou hast neither part nor lot in this matter. For thy heart is not right in the sight of God. Repent, therefore, of this thy wickedness. And pray God, if perhaps the thought of thine heart may be forgiven thee. For I perceive that thou art in the gull of bitterness, and in the bond of iniquity. Then answered Simon, and said, Pray ye to the Lord for me, that none of these things which ye have spoken come upon me. So again, uh, real quick. Peter opened the doors to the Jews. Peter now opened the door to the Samaritans. And finally, we're going to look at how Peter is going to open the door to the Gentile. And again, when we looked at this, God had to give Peter that vision because the Jews considered the Gentiles to be unclean. They won't even go to their house. And God had to show Peter, look, what I've cleansed, don't call unclean. All right, so let's look in Acts 10, 24. And the morrow after they entered into Caesarea, and Cornelius waited for them, and had called together his kinmen, and near friends. 
And as Peter was coming in, Cornelius met him and fell down at his feet and worshipped him. Again, Pope, you who call yourself Holy Father. Ugh. King of the pedophiles, that's what I refer to him as. But let's look at how a man of God reacts to people bowing before them and kissing their ring and showing obeisance. Let's see how a man of God reacts. But Peter took him up, saying, Stand up! I myself also am a man. And as he talked with him, he went in and found many that were come together. And he said unto them, Ye know how that it is an unlawful thing for a man that is a Jew to keep company or come unto one of another nation. But God has shewed me that I should not call any man common or unclean. Therefore came I unto you without gainsaying, as soon as I was sent for. I ask therefore what intent ye have sent for me. And Cornelius said, Four days ago I was fasting until this hour, and at the ninth hour I prayed in my house, and behold, a man stood before me in bright clothing, and said, Cornelius, thy prayer is heard, and thine alms are had in remembrance in the sight of God. Send therefore to Joppa, and call hither Simon, whose surname is Peter. He is lodging in the house of one Simon a tanner by the seaside, who, when he cometh, shall speak unto thee. Immediately, therefore, I sent to thee, and thou hast well done that thou art come. Now, therefore, we are we all here present before God to hear all things that are commanded thee of God. Then Peter opened his mouth and said, Of a truth I perceive that God is no respecter of persons, for in every nation he that feareth him and worketh righteousness is accepted with him. The word which God sent unto the children of Israel, preaching peace by Jesus Christ, he is Lord of all. That word, I say, ye know, which was published throughout all Judea, and began with Galilee after the baptism which John preached, how God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Ghost and with power, who went about doing good and healing all that were oppressed of the devil, for God was with him. And we are witnesses of all things which he did both in the land of the Jews and in Jerusalem, whom they slew and hanged on a tree. So again, that's the crucifixion. Him God raised up from raised up the third day and shewed him openly. So that's the resurrection. Again, that's the gospel. The death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus. Not to all the people, but unto witnesses chosen before of God, even to us who did eat and drink with him after he rose from the dead. And he commanded us to preach unto the people, and to testify that it is he which was ordained of God to be judge of the quick and dead. To him gave all the prophets witness that through his name whosoever believeth in him shall receive remission of sins. While Peter yet spake these words, the Holy Ghost fell on all them which heard the word, and they of the circumcision which believed were astonished, as many as came with Peter, 
because that on the Gentiles also was poured out the gift of the Holy Ghost. For they heard them speak with tongues and magnify God. Then answered Peter, can any, for, uh, can any man forbid water that these should not be baptized, which have received the Holy Ghost as well as we? And he commanded them to be baptized in the name of the Lord. Then prayed they him to tarry certain days. So there you have Peter listening to the Holy Ghost. And because of that, the keys of the kingdom have been opened to the Jew, the Samaritans, and to the Gentile. Now all three people group have access to God through faith in Jesus Christ. The moment you believe on Jesus Christ, that he died for your sins on the cross, he was buried, and on the third day he rose again, your sins will be forgiven you, and you will be accepted into the church. Now the church is not a building, obviously, we know that because we're not allowed to go to buildings anymore until sometime when things all go back to normal. But the church is the people of God, the body of Christ. The moment you believe on the Lord Jesus, you are placed into the body of Christ and you are part of the church. So again, Peter listened to the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit speaks. And if he speaks to you, my friend, how is God going to affect the world through you because you obey God? I can't wait to find out. So this is JC Ligar with Chloe Ligar. I pray this was a blessing to you. Join us next time as we continue with the doctrine of the Holy Spirit. God bless you.